Strategic Risk and the Management of Strategic Risks. Welcome to the Risk Management of Everything channel. On this channel, you will see videos on risk management and the application of risk management to diverse areas and sectors. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the notification button so you can be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you. This video discusses strategic risk and the management of strategic risks. In this video, you will understand the meaning of strategic risk, types of strategic risks, sources of strategic risks, strategic risk management, identification of strategic risks, strategic risk analysis, strategic risk management process, how to measure strategic risks, integrating strategic risk management and the difference between strategic and operational risk. Now, let us start. What is a strategic risk? Strategic risk management is a process for identifying, assessing, and managing risks and uncertainties affected by internal and external events or scenarios that could inhibit an organization's ability to achieve its strategy and strategic objectives to protect shareholders and enhance the firm's value. Strategic risk relates to risk at the corporate level, and it affects the development and implementation of an organization's strategy. An example is a risk resulting from an incorrect assessment of future market trends when developing the initial strategy. In developing a strategy, an organization assesses market conditions today. It then forecasts the various changes that will occur in the market over some time. For example, a company manufacturing personal computers PCs, might adopt a strategy to develop and introduce faster operating speeds. In doing so, the company will presumably analyze the current market and decide that market research indicates that there will be a continuing high demand for faster and faster PCs. The strategic risk element applies in terms of whether that strategic decision was correct. It is reasonable to say that one example of strategic risk is that the strategic decision is wrong. Strategic risk includes risk relating to the long-term performance of the organization. Strategic risk consists of a range of variables such as the market, corporate governance, and stakeholders. The market is highly variable and can change at relatively short notice, as can the country's economic characteristics or countries in which a given organization operates. The corporate governance risk of the organization includes risk relating to the reputation of the organization and the ethics with which it works. Examples include the organization's reputation and its desire to maintain it, perhaps at the expense of innovation or new developments. Stakeholder risk consists of the risk associated with the shareholders, business partners, customers, and suppliers. Shareholder attitudes can change if dividends reduce. Strategic risk is generally more challenging to manage than operational or change-slash-project risk. Strategic risk tends to be applicable over the long term, hence, strategic risk is highly time-dependent. Most operational processes tend to continue without significant change over relatively long periods. Many small to medium-sized change projects are designed and implemented within a relatively short time scale. They are unlikely to be affected by long-term changes in the political or economic environment. Strategic risks are more complex and challenging to model and assess than operational and project risks. It is relatively simple to analyze attendance records for employees and predict likely sickness and absenteeism rates through a project. It is much more challenging to assess the likelihood of a significant change in the level of competition that is characteristic of a given sector. This depends on a range of complex and long-term variables that are very difficult to consider in a form for modeling and extrapolation. In considering strategic risk management, the organization moves from current position A to the desired position B. Point A is the current position. This is where the company is now. The position is determined by several factors, including market position, size, vulnerability, gearing, and asset base. Point B is the desired position. This is where the company directors want to be in next year's time. Again, this position can be determined and described using a wide range of variables. The direct route to B represents the basis of achieving the desired goal. 
several foreseeable and unforeseeable risks will hinder the attainment of the desired goals. Some will be significant risks, and some will be minor risks. Some may occur, and some may not. Each one that occurs will affect the course of progression of the organization from A to B. The organization's strategy to move from A to B is to manage the numerous competing risks. Types of Strategic Risks The strategic risks relevant to a business depends mainly on its sector, consumer range, product range, and many other factors. There are three broad types of strategic risks, regulatory, competitor and economic risks. Let us explain these three types of strategic risks. 1. Regulatory Risks Let us imagine an organization working on a new product or planning a new service set to transform the market. Sometimes it spots a gap in the industry and then finds a way to fill it. However, the regulations change with time, and the product or service suddenly becomes unacceptable. The company cannot deliver its labor to the target audience, risking a substantial loss of revenue. The organization had hence prepared for unexpected regulatory change. The completed project elements can be incorporated into another or adapted to offer a slightly different solution. The companies need to stay updated on all the relevant regulations to the market and be aware of the possible changes I in the future. 2. Competitor Risks Competitor risk is the potential for losses due to competitive pressures. Competitive risk is the chance that competitive forces will prevent a firm from achieving its goals. It is often associated with the risk of declining business revenue or margins due to the actions of its competitors. Many industries are highly competitive. The companies can lose ground if their market rivals release a similar product at the same or lower cost. The pricing may be irrelevant if the product is, in any way, superior. The competitor analysis can help mitigate this strategic risk. Businesses should never operate in a vacuum. 3. Economic Risks Economic risk is the possibility that changes in macroeconomic conditions will negatively impact a company or investment. For instance, political instability or exchange rate fluctuations can affect losses or gains. In practice, the term economic risk is mainly used to describe the potential pitfalls of investments in fledgling foreign markets, especially those with a history of political upheaval or governmental mismanagement. It is difficult to predict economic risks, but they can pose a real danger in even a well-prepared strategy. For instance, the economic changes lead a business's target audience to lose much of disposable income. Sources of Strategic Risks Strategic risks may arise through 1. Mergers, acquisitions, and other competition. 2. Market or industry changes. 3. Changes among customers or in demand. 4. Change management. 5. Human resource issues, for example, staffing and staff training. 6. Financial issues with cash flow capital or cost pressures. 7. IT disasters and equipment failure. 8. Relationship issues, for example, issues with suppliers and contractors, and 9. Reputational damage. For example, the possibility of a United States, U.S. company buying one of the European competitors would constitute a strategic risk. Such an acquisition would give the U.S. company a distribution arm in the United Kingdom, becoming a direct competitor. In this situation, the company might want to consider 1. Any U.S. companies which have the cash-slash-share price to do this. 2. Any European competitors that are likely take over targets, for example, due to financial problems, and 3. The prospect of the U.S. company cutting prices or launching new products to compete against the organization. Where there is a strong possibility of this happening, the company should prepare some relevant responses. Integration of planning into strategic risk management. Managing strategic risk involves five steps that can be integrated into the strategic planning and implementation process. 1. Define business strategy and objectives. 
There are several frameworks that companies commonly use for strategic planning, from simple SWOT analysis to the more nuanced and holistic balanced scorecard. The one thing that these frameworks have in common, however, is their far to address risk. It is crucial, then, that companies take additional steps to integrate risk at the planning stage. 2. Establish key performance indicators, KPIs, to measure results. The best KPIs offer hints as to the levers the company can pull to improve them. Thus, overall sales make a poor KPI, while sales per customer assist the company to address issues identified. 3. Identify risks that can drive variability in performance. These are the unknowns, such as future customer demand, that will determine results. 4. Establish key risk indicators, KRIs, and tolerance levels for critical risks. Whereas KPIs measure historical performance, KRIs are forward-looking leading indicators intended to anticipate potential roadblocks. Tolerance levels serve as triggers for action. 5. Provide integrated reporting and monitoring. Finally, companies must monitor results and KRIs continuously to mitigate risks or grasp unexpected opportunities as they arise as strategic risk management. Strategic Risk Management, SRM, is a process that can assist a firm in identifying, assessing, and managing the risk associated with business strategy. It also enables an organization to take quick action when risks materialize. Strategic Risk Management involves evaluating, 1, how possible events and scenarios may affect your strategy and execution, and, 2, the ultimate impact of these risks on the company's value. Strategic risk management requires a firm to define tolerable levels of risk as a guide for making strategic decisions. Rather than a one-off effort, strategic risk management is a continual process that can be integrated into a company's strategic planning and implementation. A business should prepare for other risk categories, including compliance and regulatory risk, financial risk, and operational risk. Strategic risk management is increasingly becoming a core competency at both the management and board levels. The exact steps that an organization should take will depend on the level of maturity of its overall enterprise risk management ERM, processes. For some organizations that have already started implementing ERM, the focus on strategic risks will be a refinement and evolution of their activities. An initiative focused on strategic risks may be a good starting point for organizations just starting or considering an ERM effort. Let us discuss the five steps of sound strategic risk management practices. 1. Assess the maturity of the organization's ERM efforts relative to its strategic risks. Consider whether management and the board feel that they understand the organization's strategic risks and the related risk management processes. Develop action plans to move to a high level of ERM maturity. 2. Conduct a strategic risk assessment. Conduct a separate evaluation to understand and prioritize the organization's strategic risks. Consider both internal and external threats and events. We shall discuss T. The strategic risk assessment process later in this video. 3. Review the process for strategy setting including the identification of related risks. Review the organization's process for setting and updating its strategies and strategic objectives. Ensure that the process requires the identification and assessment of the risks embedded in the system. 4. Review the processes to measure and monitor the organization's performance. Expand the operations to include the monitoring and reporting of key performance indicators, KPIs, related to strategic risks. Embed risk monitoring and reporting into the organization's core budgeting, business performance monitoring, scorecards, and performance measurement systems. 5. Develop an ongoing process to update the assessment of strategic risks periodically. Make the strategic risk assessment process an ongoing one with periodic updating and reporting. Identification of strategic risks. The process of identifying strategic risk requires 1. Intimate knowledge of the company, including the company's operating market and legal, 
social, political, and cultural environment, and 2. Understanding of the company's strategic objectives. Here are examples of strategic risks. 1. The strategic plan might be incorrect due to incorrect assumptions, inadequate assessment of the environment, unavailability of sufficient resources, and the plan might not genuinely represent the organization's objectives. 2. The original strategic plan may be correct. Still, internal changes might overtake the program because, 1. Internal reorganizations may have led to a loss of efficiency, 2. Required changes in operational processes may not be integrated into the strategic plan, and, 3. Plan changes may not be introduced when necessary. 3. The original strategic plan may be correct, but external changes might have compromised the plan because the external environment may have changed significantly, new competitors may have entered the market, new competing products may have been released in the market, and statutory controls may have changed. The process of identifying strategic risk culminates in specifying a series of threats that make up the company's risk profile. Businesses can use many strategies to identify their strategic risks, including brainstorming, conducting a team-based exercise, interview, and survey. Brainstorming Brainstorming is a popular way to identify risk in addition to critical controls. Brainstorming involves a group of people working together to identify potential threats, failure modes, and hazards. Often these sessions include discussions around risk causes and options for risk treatment. Conduct a team-based exercise. Many companies conduct team-based exercises to get participants thinking about risks. Swift, structured what-if technique, is a popular choice that involves a facilitator using a list of prompt phrases to encourage participants to identify risk. Interview of key stakeholders. The company's management could arrange to interview selected stakeholders to identify the strategic risks of an organization. Structured interviews are often used when designing the risk management framework and involve consultations with critical stakeholders. An interview is a suitable method of collecting data to assess the risk appetite of an organization. Survey like structured interviews, although involving a more significant number of people, surveys can be used to understand different perspectives on risk and control effectiveness. For example, if a researcher wishes to assess a company's risk culture, he can send surveys to evaluate the internal control environment. Many companies conduct surveys annually to assess staff understanding of critical risk and governance policies and procedures. Strategic Risks Analysis after identifying a firm's strategic risks, the next step is to analyze the risks. There are several tools a business can use to analyze its strategic risks, including scenario analysis, fault tree analysis, swift analysis, bow tie analysis, decision tree analysis, incident analysis, probability and consequence matrix, and Delphi technique. Let us describe these analysis tools. 1. Scenario Analysis Scenario analysis is the process of forecasting the expected value of a performance indicator occurrence of different situations and related changes in the importance of system parameters under an uncertain environment. Scenario analysis is an approach where participants receive a story or description of a future event and reflect on the potential consequence and causes of the risk. Scenario analyzers can assist a business to identify threats and opportunities for fraud within its operations. Scenario analysis is primarily used to evaluate the pros and cons of organizational decisions. Initially, a base case scenario uses current and commonly accepted assumptions about the future. Two alternative scenarios are prepared, a best case scenario and a worst case scenario. The best case scenario considers what will happen if everything goes the organization's way. In contrast, the worst case scenario assumes the negative impact of factors that depreciate returns, such as an economic recession, higher interest rates, global disruption, and poor sales. 2. Fault Tree Analysis Fault Tree Analysis is a graphical tool to explore the causes of system-level failures. 
It uses Boolean logic to combine a series of lower level events. It is basically a top down approach to identify the component level failures, basic event, that cause the system level failure, top event. Fault tree analysis is a technique used for analyzing factors that contribute to an undesired event. For example, suppose a company seeks to improve its customer service. In that case, fault tree analysis can assist the firm in stating the objective in reverse, how can we annoy our customers? And prompts participants to identify potential causes that would annoy customers. Fault tree analysis consists of two elements, events and logic gates, which connect the events to identify the cause of the top undesired event. Fault tree analysis can be used to perform all types of the system level risk assessment process. The purpose of fault tree analysis is to effectively identify causes of system failure and mitigate the risks before it occurs. This is an invaluable tool for complex systems that visually displays the logical way of identifying the problem. 3. Swift Analysis The Swift Analysis stands for Structured What-If Technique. The Structured What-If Technique, SWIFT, is a high-level and less formal risk identification technique that can be used independently or as part of a staged approach to make bottom-up methods more efficient. SWIFT uses structured brainstorming in a facilitated workshop where a predetermined set of guide words, including timing and amount, are combined with prompts elicited from participants that often begin with phrases such as what if, or how could. A SWIFT analysis allows participants to look at the system response to problems rather than just examining the consequences of component failure. SWIFT analysis can be used to identify opportunities for improvement of processes and systems and generally can be used to identify actions that lead to and enhance their probabilities of success. The SWIFT analysis method can be used to understand the consequence and viability of risks inherent in organizations and projects. The risk analysis and project team evaluate all the changes made to the project based on the changes made in the project's design or plan and use them to identify threats to a firm's operation. 4. Bowtie Analysis Bowtie analysis is a diagrammatic approach that describes links and analyzes risk pathways from causes to consequences. The bowtie analysis is one of the most practical approaches to risk management. It helps teams understand the risks and effects reasonably, which makes coming up with a risk mitigation strategy a lot simpler. The process is relatively straightforward. The team identifies various risk events of a project or within an organization. Then, the team divides each risk event into two sides. All the possible causes for the risk event taking place are listed. On the other side, all the possible consequences and impacts of the risk are listed. And the risk professionals then analyze and create barriers or other mitigation methods to every cause of risk to prevent the consequence of the risk. 5. Decision Tree Analysis The decision tree analysis is used to create various outcomes or consequences of an action. This risk analysis method is widely used because project teams can be prepared for all possible effects and create strategies to ensure that they can achieve the best one out of them. The decision tree analysis is used to chart or create a pathway for teams to avoid risks and follow the best operational risks practices with an organization and its projects. A decision tree analysis is mainly used when project teams do not know or are uncertain of the outcome. This way, they can gauge the different possibilities, prepare for the worst, and expect the best. The process involves creating different effects, analyzing their probabilities, and then creating a pathway or a course of action to achieve the best results. 6. Incident Analysis Incident analysis is a technique suitable for identifying problems within a company, analyzing the occurrence frequency, and identifying the cause of an event. Incident analysis is a structured process for identifying what happened, how and why it happened, what can be done to reduce recurrence risk, make care safer, and what was learned. It is an integral activity in the incident management continuum, representing the activities and processes surrounding a patient safety incident. Incident analysis helps to identify patterns and trends of significant activity. 
The incident analysis solution contains maps and tools that can assist an organization in determining the pattern and trend analysis and author situation maps showing incident locations and types of significant activity. 7. Probability and Consequence Matrix Probability and consequence matrix is the most widely used method of understanding the impact and severity of operational risks. The probability and consequence matrix is created to help teams rank the identified threats, vulnerabilities, and risks. This is done to identify how severe a risk could be if it materialized. The severity of risks is calculated by multiplying the level of impact of the risk against the likelihood or probability of the risk taking place. By identifying and estimating the different factors of strategic risks in the probability and consequence matrix, it also becomes easier for risk analysts and professionals to work with teams and develop various risk avoidance and mitigation strategies for risk management. 8. Delphi Technique The Delphi method, also known as the Estimate Talk Estimate Technique, ETE, is a systematic and qualitative method of forecasting by collecting opinions from a group of experts through several rounds of questions. The Delphi method relies on experts knowledgeable about a particular topic so they can forecast the outcome of future scenarios, predict the likelihood of an event, or reach a consensus on a specific topic. The concerned teams must work with risk analysts and other security specialists to identify potential threats and vulnerabilities to a firm's operational risks and project. The crucial point of what makes the Delphi technique works is that it uses risk professionals and experts. Without utilizing the expert skills, it becomes no different from a regular brainstorming session and will not yield very successful results. After the brainstorming session is complete, risk analysts and team members work together to evaluate their identified risks and analyze them. All the experts make their lists of potential threats and their evaluations individually and then compare them to create a complete risk register to document all the risks before creating a risk management strategy. Strategic Risk Assessment Process let us discuss the seven basic steps in conducting a strategic risk assessment. 1. Understand organizational strategy. The initial step in the assessment process is to understand the organization's key business strategies and objectives. Some organizations have well-developed strategic plans and objectives, while others may be much more informal in their articulation and documentation of strategy. The assessment must create an overview of the organization's key strategies and business objectives in either case. This step is critical because, without these vital data to focus around, an assessment could result in a long laundry list of potential risks with no way to prioritize them. This step also establishes a foundation for integrating risk management with the business strategy. In conducting this step, a strategy framework could be helpful to provide structure to the activity. 2. Gather views and data on strategic risks. The next step is to gather information and views on the organization's strategic risks. This can be achieved through interviews of key executives and directors, surveys, and information analysis, for example, financial reports and investor presentations. This data gathering should also include internal and external auditors and other personnel who would view risks such as compliance or safety personnel. Information gathered in step the first of may be helpful to frame discussions or surveys and relate them to core strategies. This is also an opportunity to ask what these key individuals view as potential emerging risks that should also be considered. 3. Prepare a preliminary strategic risk profile. Combine and analyze the data gathered in the first two steps to develop an initial profile of the organization's strategic risks. The level of detail and type of presentation should be tailored to the culture of the organization. For some organizations, simple lists are adequate, while others may want more detail as part of the profile. At a minimum, the profile should communicate a concise list of the top risks and their potential severity or ranking. Color-coded reports or heat maps may be helpful to ensure clarity of communication of this critical information. 4. Validate and finalize the strategic risk profile. 
the initial strategic risk profile must be validated, refined, and finalized. Depending on how the data gathering was accomplished, this step could involve validation with all or some key executives and directors. However, it is critical to gain sufficient validation to prevent significant disagreements on the final risk profile. 5. Develop a strategic risk management action plan. This step should be undertaken in tandem with step 4. While a significant effort can go into an initial risk assessment and strategic risk profile, the actual product of this effort should be an action plan to enhance risk monitoring or management actions related to the strategic risks identified. The ultimate value of this process is helping and strengthening the organization's ability to manage and monitor its top risks. 6. Communicate the strategic risk profile and strategic risk management action plan. Building and enhancement of the organization's risk culture is a communications effort with two primary focuses. The first focus is the communication of the organization's top risks and the strategic risk management action plan to help build an understanding of the risks and how they are being managed. This helps focus personnel on what those key risks are and potentially how significant they might be. A second focus is the communication of management's expectations regarding risk to help reinforce the message that the understanding and management of risk is a core competency and expected role of people across the organization. The risk culture is an integral part of the overall corporate culture. The assessment of the corporate culture and risk culture is an initial step in building and nurturing a high-performance, high-integrity corporate culture. 7. Implement the Strategic Risk Management Action Plan As noted above, the real value resulting from the risk assessment process comes from implementing an action plan for managing and monitoring risk. These steps define a basic, high-level process and allow for a significant amount of tailoring and customization to reflect the maturity and capabilities of the organization. Strategic risk assessment is an ongoing process, not just a one-time event. Based on the dynamic nature of risk, these seven steps constitute a circular or closed-loop process that should be ongoing and continual within the organization. Having considered the strategic risk assessment process, let us discuss how to measure strategic risk how to measure strategic risks. A key tenet of enterprise risk management, ERM, measures risk with the same yardsticks used to measure results. In this way, companies can calculate how much inherent risk their initiatives contain. Strategic risk can be measured with two key metrics. 1. Economic capital is the amount of equity required to cover unexpected losses based on a predetermined solvency standard. This standard is usually derived from the company's target debt rating. Economic capital is a common currency with which any risk can be quantified. Importantly, it applies the same methodology and assumptions used in determining enterprise value, making it ideal for strategic risk. 2. Risk Adjusted Return on Capital Rare rock, is the anticipated after-tax return on an initiative divided by economic capital. If rare rock exceeds the company's cost of capital, the organization is viable and will add value. If rare rock is less than the cost of capital, it will destroy value. Integrating Strategic Risk Management Since strategic risk is tied to an organization's strategies, strategic risk management must become incorporated with the organization's core processes. To embed strategic risk management into the organization's inner workings, you can follow these seven steps to integrate risk management with strategic planning. Stage 1. Develop the strategy. Define your mission and vision, as well as the ways by which you will assess risks. This stage includes developing the mission, values, and vision, strategic analysis, and strategy formulation. At this stage, a strategic risk assessment could be included using the return-driven strategy framework to articulate and clarify the strategy and the strategic risk management framework to identify the organization's strategic risks. Stage 2, Translate the Strategy. This stage includes developing strategy maps, strategic themes, objectives, measures, targets, initiatives, 
and the strategic plan in strategy maps, balanced scorecards, and strategic expenditures. Here, the strategic risk management framework would be used to develop risk-based objectives and performance measures for balanced scorecards and strategy maps and for analyzing risks related to strategic expenditures. At this stage, boards may also want to consider developing a risk scorecard that includes critical metrics. Stage 3, Align the Organization Review existing processes and procedures to ensure that risk management is incorporated and addressed. If anything is out of date or lacking information, PR or VDA updates. This stage includes aligning business units, support units, employees, and boards of directors. The Strategic Risk Management Alignment Guide and Strategic Framework for GRC, Governance, Risk and Compliance, would be useful for aligning risk and control units toward more effective and efficient risk management and governance and linking this alignment with the organization's strategy. Stage 4, Communication. The company must communicate with stakeholders and the internal team why strategic risk management is aligned with everyone's interests. You can agree to regular updates and discussions about progress or gaps in the process. Stage 5, Plan Operations Train everyone to understand how they can implement best practices to avoid or monitor strategic risks. This stage includes developing the operating plan, key process improvements, sales planning, resource capacity planning, and budgeting. In this stage, the strategic risk management action plan can be reflected in the operating plan and dashboards, including risk dashboards. One organization we worked with developed a resources follow risk philosophy to ensure that resources were appropriately and efficiently allocated. This philosophy focused on ensuring that resources used in risk management are justified economically based on the relative amount of risk and cost benefit analysis. Stage 6 Monitor and Learn. This stage includes strategy and operational reviews. Strategic risk reviews should be part of the ongoing strategic risk assessment, which reinforces the necessary continual, closed loop approach for a practical strategy risk assessment and strategy execution. The management should monitor how processes are running and how business goals are being affected. Analyzing data and monitoring KPIs is crucial to ensure that you are doing the right things to achieve business goals. One of the easiest ways to monitor KPIs in real time is to utilize an automation tool because you can continuously track KPIs via dashboards. Stage 7, Test and Adapt. After implementation, keep an eye on the system. Perform quality reviews, and don't be afraid to make changes if needed. This stage includes profitability analysis and emerging strategies. Emerging risks can be considered part of the ongoing strategic risk assessment in this stage. The strategic risk assessment can complement and leverage the strategy execution processes in an organization toward improving risk management and governance. The difference between strategic and operational risks. Strategic risk represents a possible source of loss often determined by business plan performance, business objectives, and the organization's business strategy. Strategic risk management, SRM, is used to identify, assess, and manage risks in an organization. The focus of SRM is typically on internal and external scenarios and enables the organization to achieve its strategic objectives. SRM program S need to account for risks related to shifts in customer demand, competitive pressures, technological changes, and pressure from stakeholders. The key to SRM is to measure and manage as many of the risks as possible. Operational risks represent risks related to the organization being able to execute against its strategic plan. Operational risk management, ORM, is used to conduct risk assessments, risk decisions, and implementation of risk controls. A successful ORM program provides risk acceptance, avoidance, and mitigation. Operational risk can often fall into three categories, environmental risk, financial risk, and reputational risk. Like other frameworks, the operational risk framework encompasses identification, assessments, monitoring, and reporting risks.
What are the differences between strategic risk and operational risk? Strategic risk and operational risk are both parts of an enterprise risk management ERM, strategy. Strategic risk looks at the business, its objectives, and its overall strategy. On the other hand, operational risk brings a more tactical view of an enterprise's risk profile with assessments and implementing of controls. It wouldn't make sense in an enterprise to have one without the other. Operational risk tends to have more emphasis in many organizations because of its assessment and control capabilities. Many companies are looking to remediate risk, and most of such risks are in the operational risk domain. Strategic risk and organizational risk play essential roles in an ERM strategy. The secret to managing risk is to do four things, accept the risk, avoid risk, reduce risk, or transfer risk. Strategic risk works to identify risks to the business plan and strategy. Operational risk enables the organization to execute against its strategic plan. Consequently, there are synergies between strategic and operational risks, but there are some differences between them. On the one hand, strategic risk is led by strategy, while operational risk is more tactical. Most organizations intend to identify risk, put controls in place to prevent it, and ultimately mitigate or accept the risk. An organization should have an ERM program with solid foundational components like strategic risk management, organizational risk management, financial risk management, and compliance risk management. Conclusion Strategic risk and the management of strategic risk have been discussed in this video. In business, risk means that an organization's plans may not turn out as initially planned or may not meet its target or achieve its goals. Risk is often described based on an event, a change in circumstances, and the event's consequence. Building a business takes much hard work, but some risks are more harmful than others. While success is the goal, risks may stop businesses from achieving the desired goals. Strategic risks threaten a company's ability to achieve its financial goals. Strategic risks are R risks that affect a company's business strategy or strategic objectives. These risks can be uncertainties or opportunities and are usually the critical matters that concern the board. I hope the video is educative and beneficial to you. Please post your comments below in the comments section. If this video has been educative and beneficial to you, then, Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you for seeing the risk management of everything videos. We love to hear from you. Please post your comments and questions in the comment section down below. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe to our channel, Risk Management of Everything channel, and press the notification button so you can be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you.